Hello, I would like to thank the organizers and Damika for the kind invitation uh, for this uh, keynote lecture. It's a great honor and privilege to be here uh, with you all and to share with you some of my views and also from the evidence from the literature on limb salvage versus amputation in injuries of the limbs. I will look at both upper and lower limbs. This problem has been a great challenge to surgeons all over the world. The conclusions has been diverse and nothing can be drawn conclusively because the evidence is not strong. Today, let's look at the various aspects of salvage and amputation and let us look forward towards finding some solutions that are authentic and contextual to our needs. So as Sri Lanka hand society uh, grows and develops, it will play an important role in impacting on policies and guidelines for the management of complex injuries in upper and lower limbs as it involves both orthopedic and plastic surgeon for the two main components and not forgetting our therapists, occupational and physiotherapists in the care of the patient. Let's hope this is the beginning for the development of a multidisciplinary team that will head towards producing high quality care for the complex problems of limb injuries in Sri Lanka. Let me tell you a little story about how the formation of the Sri Lanka Society for Surgery de Han uh, was conceived. In 2014, I met Damika uh, virtually and over this period of time, we conducted many hand teaching programs and workshops uh, successfully due to his team's organization in Sri Lanka. In 2015, um, Dameka organized a hand surgery instructional program in Jaffna, my birthplace, and we had uh, two eminent hand surgeons uh, who attended, uh, international hand surgeons, Raja Sabapati and Jion Cha from Australia. And the three of us gave Dameka and his team a challenge to establish the Sri Lanka Society for Surgery of the Hand. On January 26, uh, 2020, my last uh, international workshop uh, before the COVID, uh, well, the COVID had started, but at that time there was no uh, restriction in travel. We conducted a fracture fixation workshop in Colombo for the surgeons there. And then at the end of that workshop, Dameka organized a meeting at a fantastic hotel. We had a breakfast meeting overlooking the beautiful ocean. And uh, the coming together of orthopedic and plastic surgeons to form the pro tem committee for the Sri Lanka Society for Surgery of the Hand. It was a great meeting and I was privileged to be involved in uh, helping them set this uh, society. On the 8th of March, 2020, the Sri Lanka Society for Surgery of the Hand held its first meeting and by which time the pandemic has set in. It was a pity that uh, I was not able to attend it uh, physically but did so virtually. Anyway, congratulations uh, to the Sri Lanka Society for Surgery of the Hand and I'm really honoured uh, to be here to give this keynote address. In this lecture, I will talk about salvage versus amputation in injuries in the limbs, uh, both the lower limb and the upper limb. Our aim as a surgeon is to return the patient to his pre-injury state in the optimal fashion as we can. We must provide the best quality of life for the patient from the patient's perspective and not our perspective. We must avoid repeated admissions treatment which incur costs not just financially but emotional economic and occupational costs. Patients must be informed of the possible outcomes as a result of our intervention and we must understand the patient's challenges, the challenges of his community and his family and the economic support that he has to undergo complex reconstruction. Our aim is also to try and provide functionally active individuals who are able to return to the community and provide support and occupational and functional outcomes of our intervention must be discussed openly with our patients. So when we look at a major trauma that occurs to an individual, as surgeons we are 
quite focused on the biological and physical aspects, but the impact is beyond that. We must look at the psychological, social and economic factors that are involved in the injury. We must understand our patient and the context in which we are providing intervention. So it's important that sometimes we look at the evidence which are in the outside our context may not be applicable to our own individual situation. So when we make decisions pertaining to complex injuries of the limb, we need to look at it from our perspective. And these are the four areas that we should look at from the patient perspective, from the perspective of the injury, the clinician, and the resources that are available. Not only the human talent that is available, the skills, the team, and also looking at the economic and social support. There have been a lot of scoring systems that have been used in complex injuries in the lower limb. However, the evidence is not convincing that they are useful. So in the first part of the lecture, I'm going to talk about type 3B and C gastillo injuries of the lower limb. And we're going to compare what is the evidence available for reconstruction and salvage as opposed to amputation. And look at some of the evidence which are mainly Western in nature. And uh, we will also discuss some of the early uh, systematic review that we have conducted, uh, which is the preliminary data to see what is the evidence for uh, the two interventions. Hansen in 1987 concluded that it was not worth saving the limb in a type 2C tibial fracture. He had argued because of the futility of reconstruction as a disservice to the patients and as no social justice as it may ruin the life from all other perspectives. That's a long time ago and a lot of things have changed since then. Technology, our fixation techniques, our soft tissue reconstruction have all changed. But maybe he may still be right. I think there isn't any strong evidence that salvage is superior to amputation. And I personally think that if amputation was included as a first option with a multidisciplinary team decision making, it may be a much more efficient, effective and optimum form of treatment for the patient as a whole. We need to think about that with an open mind. That is my bias, and I admit my bias towards that. And this is based on four decades of experience, having salvaged many limbs uh, in my earlier part of my career. To salvage or not to salvage? That is the question. The evidence shows that the outcome may be better in reconstruction than amputation, but is it really? Uh, we need to look at the evidence critically and we must contextualize the evidence that we have from the literature to that of our own context. There must be authenticity. Limb salvage scores have been used tremendously and uh, in a lot of settings. However, the evidence currently shows that they are of no use. There may be some research use, but they're not practical in decision making. One of the uh, concepts that was said about posterior tibial nerve, especially, the absence of the posterior tibial nerve with the insensate foot was one of the contraindications for salvage. Uh, this again has not been shown to be true as their uh, protective sensations may come back. Um, and this is quite interesting. Uh, I will be giving another lecture in March on the future of nerve surgery. Uh, those who are interested can contact me. And the cost. It has been said that amputation costs overall may be more expensive than salvage. Uh, I am not convinced of that evidence. And a lot of that evidence came from US studies where costs are very expensive for prosthesis and maintenance. Technology has changed tremendously where we can produce rapidly low cost prostheses uh, that are well custom fitted for the patient remotely with the use of um, CAD design and artificial uh, intelligence to produce prosthetic uh, competency in areas that lack it and rapid uh, production with additive technology that is 3D printing and uh, delivering such uh, to the uh, patient. Also, very few studies have measured the psychological and commercial 
and economic cost to society from preservation and salvage surgery. Uh, most of them are multiple surgeries and the cost of surgeries have gone up phenomenally as compared to earlier studies. Patient satisfaction is a big area which there has not been much studies. There have been no qualitative studies on patient satisfaction comparing salvage to amputations. It is important for us to understand the patient's lived experience as an amputee or one who had salvage with multiple procedures and cost and to compare that. And this data needs to be studied uh, and gathered from your context. And uh, we are planning to do that in Singapore. Most of the research uh, for limb salvage in the lower limb with the use of fixed and flat came from Godina's early work in 1986, where he found that early emergency free flap surgery uh, reduces uh, the infection and improves the survivability of flaps as compared to the use of delayed techniques which resulted in high uh, rate of flap failure and infections. However, with the introduction of the uh, VAC therapy, the uh, negative pressure on the wound, it has made some changes where when resources do not allow for emergency fix and flap uh, strategies, that you can delay the reconstruction with the uh, use of the uh, VAC as an intermediary while waiting for resources. There's been reviews that have shown that what the VAC does is it improves the granulation tissues. It may reduce the area requiring flaps by a process of healing through neovascularization. And it may even allow for simpler flaps with smaller areas and maybe even local flaps for preservation and salvage of the rim. So negative pressure uh, techniques have also been used for improving flat survival rates as it improves the circulation of the bed. The development and uh, revisitation of local flaps in the lower limb has made a significant impact on the salvage of the lower limb in complex injuries. Personally, my experience is in the use of the gastrocnemius, the hemisoleus, both uh, anti-grade and retrograde hemisoleus flaps, and the reverse sural flap for resurfacing of the uh, soft tissues in tibial uh, injuries. I would like to make that in my own personal view, I think the use of highly vascularized flap for major uh, bone defects uh, and devascularization of bone is important. Uh, some low flow flaps sometimes do not provide the biology for bone healing to occur. In complex reconstruction of the lower limb, it is beyond just mere soft tissue cover, but we must also look at the biology of uh, the bone healing to occur. And the use of muscle flaps are generally, uh, I, I find, more useful. Also, the important changes that has resulted in salvage is the use of the frame and the frame surgeons now are very competent in putting frames and even providing lengthening uh, to overcome the shortening of the bone. So let's look at, this is one of the uh, uh, latest uh, systematic reviews comparing uh, amputation and uh, salvage in 3B, 3C fractures of the tibia. They reviewed 28 articles. From the onset, I must say that they all were, had tremendous amount of heterogeneity and therefore no real systematic review can be performed in the form of meta-analysis because they were all mainly observational studies. So it's more of a qualitative synthesis uh, in the sense of a meta-aggregation of whatever data that they have. So the quality of the data is actually quite poor. In terms of length of say, there were no statistical difference. Again, these are retrospective studies where amputation was only considered later when all secondary procedures, uh, attempted procedures had failed and it was amputated. And if the protocol was in a randomized control fashion where amputation was offered as a primary 
uh, form of treatment, I think the results will be different. The secondary amputation rates were as shown here uh, with the, in 3B uh, was up to about 5% uh, and 3C was 28%. But again, the numbers are quite uh, different. Uh, obviously, 3Cs are much more serious injuries with a high amputation rate. Infections, gemelitis range from you know, 4 to 56 with a 17% pool rate. Flap loss had a 5.8% pool, uh, pool rate. Non-union was about 15%. Functional outcomes were reported in this systematic review as better uh, in the salvage patient as compared to amputation uh, patient. The terms of uh, physical and mental components of the patients, again, the numbers are very, very small. In amputation, they had a better physical score as compared to uh, salvage, and mental scores were no different for both. Um, the rate of uh, uh, which weight bearing occurred were not much different, but return to work were approximately same with maybe the amputees uh, pulled at 73% as compared to 63% for the salvage patient. Most people would quote the LEAP study, the Lower Extremity Assessment Project, which is again a US study. Again, I would like to say that this is in a different context and doesn't uh, really reflect our context in um, Asia. Also, uh, this was an old paper in 2002 and uh, therefore lacks validity for quoting this as the uh, evidence for amputation or uh, salvage. The two-year outcomes were same for either one. Uh, there were certain predictive factors that they found, and one of them was the use of um, scoring systems made no difference. The complications uh, rates produces poorer uh, outcomes if there were major complications, the education level, non-white race, uh, poverty, and uh, social support. Uh, these were some of the factors. In contrast, the in 2013, the METAL study, uh, I am quite familiar with this cohort of patients because uh, my 10 years in the National Health Service in the UK, where our hospital was the single center that received all the military uh, victims uh, from the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. And uh, this patient here, the triple amputee, is one of my patients. Uh, I had the privilege of operating on his only available limb, the right upper limb, and we reconstructed his uh, three digits on the radial side. And I agree that the amputation patients did better. We had a multidisciplinary team to assess these patients, and we made assessment from the battlefield. We had communications uh, with the patient's uh, primary surgeon in the battlefields. We had video communications and we provided immediate resuscitation and assessment had already started before the arrival 19 hours later in the United Kingdom uh, straight to surgery. And uh, I agree with most of these findings in this 2018 paper and but however the limitation is these are highly motivated young individuals uh, who are soldiers who obey orders very well so we felt a need that we need to have a much more recent uh, review of the literature and uh, my colleagues and i we did uh, we haven't published this yet we are in early stages we're just analyzing our data uh, systematic review of uh, 3bc a uh, 3c fractures uh, we have 645 patients that we have collected from 16 studies. Uh, we screened through 3,570 uh, uh, papers, uh, mainly done by my colleague, Dr. Hanang, and her uh, co-workers. And we have an uh, approximate number of amputation compared to limb salvage. So there was a slightly higher percentage of primary amputations in our review of the literature. Really a rate for limb salvage was ranged from 9 to 13, uh, 30 percent. Full weight bearing was obtained between 6 to 13 months. Again, we found there was no consistency in the measurement of the outcomes 
from these uh, studies. And so therefore, the heterogeneity provides challenges. Uh, primary, the return to work uh, in the primary amputation uh, was slightly higher, uh, generally, we haven't gone into the details yet, as compared to limb salvage, and I think that makes sense. Uh, there was no significant differences between the physical impact and the mental impact between either one or the other. However, in the domain, domains of recreation and jobs, amputation seems to have a better outcome. The prevalence of mechanical pain was significantly seen among the limb salvage patient as compared to neuropathic pain was seen in amputation papers, uh, patients as expected. 92% of the patient preferred salvage as opposed to amputation. Again, uh, we were question this as details are not available. When were they asked? Were they shown comparative outcomes between the others? to make that informed decision. However, none preferred amputation as the first event. It will be interesting to see at the end of it, would they have preferred amputation at maybe the end of two years. Uh, satisfaction rate slightly higher in the amputation group and the salvage group. Guidelines have been drawn both by the British and the uh, American groups, uh, they are available on the net and easily you can look at it, but they are guidelines. Again, Western-based guidelines and may not be suitable for our context. I'll just go through a couple of cases uh, to describe the salvage in lower limb complex trauma. In this young individual road traffic accident, these are cases from my colleague, uh, Dr. Rex, and uh, the patient had uh, fix and flap in terms of uh, uh, nailing and uh, uh, he had significant bone loss, an ALT flap use and then the bone loss was um, initially managed with bone spacer, cement spacer and then uh, muscular technique for iliac crest bone grafting for skeletal reconstruction and uh, at four months post injury the patient was weight bearing and returned to work and I hear from my colleague Dr. Rex that this patient uh, got married uh, following his injury and I suppose the presence of a leg helped to cure the marriage. Um, another patient, again, this is from Dr. Rex, patient, 27-year-old male who had a major trauma and ended up with uh, femur and tibia fractures in the same limb, gastillo 3C for the femur, 3B for the tibia with femoral artery injury and revascularization uh, in the femur. Uh, skeletal stabilization was obtained with uh, intramedullary and extramedullary devices as shown and the patient underwent uh, multiple reconstructive procedures with latissimus dorsi flap, muscle flap for initial coverage which then went into complication of failure with implant exposure requiring further reconstruction with the use of a hemisoleus uh, reverse flap for the tibia and a cross leg latissimus dorsi myocutaneous flap for the uh, femur. Uh, this case was obviously known to the whole department and I was one of the proponents to push Dr. Rex to amputate the leg but Dr. Rex uh, felt very passionate to save the leg and after multiple procedures with complication of osteomyelitis, with removal of implant, flap, uh, partial failure, after two years and 75 procedures later, Dr. Rex was successful in obtaining healing with fusion of the knee and the patient is weight bearing with return to work. And again, uh, he got married uh, after his injury and probably the salvage did help to secure the marriage. We will now go on to the upper limb. Amputation, we look at amputation and some of the prostheses and the demands of this. So sometimes we are unable to uh, save this thumb. So in this patient who was a kitchen hand who uh, came to us as an emergency, obviously uh, it was a non-replantable digit with multiple segmental injuries in the amputated digit. 
and we acted for an emergency reconstruction with a toe wraparound procedure and we did uh, multiple surgeries to improve the cosmesis as she was a single lady who was extremely uh, pleased with the outcome and she changed job from a kitchen hand to become a bus driver improving her income too. In another case where we did uh, emergency toe transplant, when I say emergency, not acutely, but within the first uh, admission uh, for a multi-digit amputation in the finger to give a three-digit hand, uh, which I thought was a very successful outcome with a nicely uh, opposable thumb to the uh, second toe. Uh, however, the patient was very, very uh, upset that his toe was bent uh, curled up, which he was counseled that the toe will always look like a toe, and he wanted a fusion of the toe in the straight, which I refused, and uh, he was lost. So when we look at amputations of the upper limb, they're slightly different from the lower limb, uh, depending on the level at which the amputation is performed and the stump. Though they are not weight-bearing, they are loading uh, limbs. So there's a difference between prosthesis and orthoses. Orthoses are used as support devices to help support the limb, whereas prostheses are there to replace the function or appearance of a limb and function. Again, in terms of outcomes for uh, post-complex reconstruction and amputation, it is found that in both below knee and above knee amputation, uh, the functioning rate and employment and pain is pretty good and they function quite well. So amputation with prosthesis produces reasonably good amputation. One of the uh, important factors that was said that amputation uh, was more expensive than reconstruction was because of the maintenance and the uh, availability of prosthesis in the lower limb. Uh, I must say that if uh, I just did a preliminary uh, uh, search of cost of limbs and uh, some of the limb these prostheses are available from India and also from China uh, this is the cost difference if you compare to the US the cost is about seven thousand dollars for a prosthesis whereas in the um, in Asia you can get it for US uh, two hundred and fifty dollars and a lot of these have low maintenance costs and some of them can be discarded uh, after three to five years, the survival with a new one, even then the cost uh, would be, I would assume, would be cheaper. So this aspect, I, I still think that the cost of reconstruction is much, much more expensive than amputation, rapid rehabilitation with this modern orthosis and prosthesis. Now, looking towards the future, and this is, uh, Japan has done this for Philippines in terms of supply of prosthesis uh, uh, with this, the use of AI for prosthetic and orth orthotic competency, artificial intelligence can be used when competencies in orthosis uh, and, and, and prosthesis is not available in certain uh, low income and medium income countries. The use of C uh, 3, 3D computer assisted design for rapid design and development of uh, prosthesis and orthosis. Uh, has made a tremendous difference. 3D printing has made uh, uh, a great transformation in the production of uh, prostheses and orthosis. And this therefore can be done remotely and sent to the patient. And this is going to be a game changer for orthosis and prosthesis. So with this sort of uh, um, technological enablement, we are able to produce bespoke timely uh, prosthesis for the customers, with the, which we'll see the components that are challenging in the production of prosthesis will be the fitting of the prosthesis to the stump. And this can be done with 3D scanning and then transmitted to a facility where 3D printing is done and the prosthesis can be shifted up uh, in a fairly rapid time in for remote areas with lacking competency in orthosis and prosthesis. So what are the challenges of upper limb amputation? One of the great challenges is the fact that you don't have a preoperative stage where you can counsel the patient as an elective amputation, either in diabetes or tumor surgery. Here, the patient has a sudden traumatic event which is psychologically uh, impacts the patient tremendously. And then we have no attempt to uh, counsel the patient. 
and it's going to be very difficult to disguise the loss of an upper limb as opposed to a lower limb which can be easily hidden with the use of uh, long uh, apparels and the extreme high expectation because we use our upper limbs for a lot of intricate function and so counseling becomes very challenging so the characteristics of a successful prosthesis is that it must be comfortable to wear it must be user friendly in the sense of wearing it for long periods of time in the terms of donning it and removing it it has to be lightweight and durable and also cosmetically pleasing and it must function mechanically well and it must be maintenance free so a lot of the uh, disadvantage has been in this mechanical and com computerized devices that require maintenance most important is the motivation of the individual to use these implants to be uh, i'm sorry these um, uh, devices so when you do consideration for the prosthesis the level of amputation is very important and depending on which level and how you're going to then provide the function requires uh, an important consideration by the surgeon so the surgeon must discuss with the prosthetic uh, professional to see what level and how to do the amputation we look at some of these new strategies that we look at for amputation and you need to contour the residual limb to such a way that it will accept the prosthesis and you must discuss with the patient the expected function that the patient can obtain from the prosthesis the cognitive function of the patient is again very important because you need to be able to understand the mechanics to be able to use it efficiently failure to get the patient's motivation is one of the great causes for the rejection rate of uh, prosthesis by amputees understanding the patient's job and needs again will help in the provision of the type of pro prosthesis uh, voca uh, uh, a vocational interest of the patient that is hobbies are also important uh, cosmetics are uh, again uh, important not to remember uh, forget that just because somebody who's poor or a laborer uh, cosmesis is still important again understanding the financial resources the patient has to undergo the rehabilitation and the maintenance of the prosthesis i want to talk a little bit about uh, the use of um, uh, muscle uh, targeted in re-innovation for the um, myoelectric prosthesis so there's been a lot of work in a, like in a severe amputee is to re-innovate the muscles uh, so as the muscles can then control the uh, prosthetic device with the use of sensors and provide certain types of uh, uh, motor function in the um, prosthesis through the use of the surface electrodes on the uh, muscles and so this is through a process of pattern recognition and biofeedback training it can provide really very good uh, outcomes so targeted muscle re-innovation is a process by which you take the remnant nerves the median the ulna and the uh, branches of the radial nerve and target them to specific muscles left in the stump and to label these muscles and map them so that surface electrodes can be placed uh, to produce appropriate function in the uh, distal part of the uh, prosthesis so here is a case that was reported and which are the muscles that they um, uh, 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 targeted for re-innovation uh, for the use of the prosthesis now the deca arm which was uh, developed by the u.s military uh, has shown that it is uh, uh, very functional uh, once applied especially for very proximal amputation with disarticulation of the shoulder and it is still it is now available commercially obviously it's very very expensive again using surface electrodes and it requires a significant amount of training with biofeedback by the individuals there are various upper limb prostheses um, they are the cosmetic ones so the cosmetic ones are cheap easy to uh, fabricate uh, however they are functionally not very good and they require a bit of training and they have uh, very cumbersome harnessing devices so in a prosthesis you need to 
be able to support that prosthesis to the stump in a way that is stable, that it won't come off and provide that level of confidence for the patient to use them. The mechanical device uses gravity and uh, um, pendulum sort of actions to uh, make its function. So they are passive and active prostheses. The passive prostheses like the uh, lifelike silicon gloving have provides very good cosmesis and some amount of function used as it acts like a post, uh, however they do not have sensation, but they do provide support for improving function in amputations of the uh, distal portions of the hand. The myoelectric uh, prosthesis, as I mentioned earlier, uh, works on surface electrodes and the patient's ability to control the various uh, degrees of freedom in the prosthesis by firing specific motor components. Some of them are cosmetically quite uh, uh, pleasing with specific uh, draping with the uh, material that are quite lifelike. Uh, they are lightweight with current modern uh, materials. The, st the stabilization of the, the, uh, the application of the prosthesis to the stump and uh, it's always a challenge and osteointegration that means uh, either use uh, of devices where it is the prosthesis is fixed to the bone uh, is a, a very very stable form of uh, the prosthetic and stump interface uh, most of the dissatisfaction of the patients for the use of prosthesis has been with the use of sockets and sleeves. Uh, these are the difficult areas how they uh, fix the uh, prosthesis to the stump. In terms of bowel, uh, body powered prosthesis uh, in the hands, the, uh, the, the slowness in the movement is one of the big components. It's very awkward to use. So rejection rates range from 16 to 66%. In some cases, up to 80% will not use. Uh, uh, thing. So the, the target uh, process is the device, the distal portion of it, which is for gripping, uh, becomes not so efficient uh, as compared to the myoelectric devices. The simpler hooks um, are much more functionally uh, acceptable, uh, though they do not have the cosmetic and the high functional outcome, but they are very durable, they are low weight, and they have... Uh, quite a high acceptability among the duties. In terms of, the, as I mentioned earlier, the suspension options. So with the current use of titanium modern uh, metallic device, it's possible to put in an implant. This is very similar. We, in the upper limb, we learned this from the oral surgeons who use dental implants, uh, which are implanted into the uh, jaw bones. And so you can put this metal device and you have an anchoring uh, um, uh, protrusion, metallic protrusion, which then can be used to anchor your prosthesis. And in the hand, as I said, the prosthesis with the, the silicone drapings uh, look very lifelike and they can even have components like the hair. So cosmetically, they become quite uh, acceptable and uh, you can even have a few devices, one for heavy duty work and another prosthesis for uh, social uh, activities. We're looking at the electric uh, prosthesis, myoelectric prosthesis. So the pros for this is that their appearance are really good. They're very good function in terms of uh, pinch and grip and their operations are quite easy once the patients are trained and they do lack uh, harnesses. They don't really require harness. Uh, and Recently, uh, they can be made sensate, so the sensate hand, the prosthetic hand, where the use of uh, pressure sensors in the glove of the hand transmits um, sensory signals to the surfaces of the stump to stimulate. And with biofeedback and training, the patient has feelings in the, from uh, the prosthetic hand uh, via the stump and they have shown to have improved function and comfort. The cons obviously are that it is uh, requires maintenance because of the electrical components. They are, they are costly and they tend to slightly weigh higher 
than the other types of the simple types of um, devices there is a consumable part which is the re the batteries need replacement and so are the gloves because of durability issues but i think with the cost of uh, new materials and fabric this will drop so let's see what's in it for sri lanka what do we do at the end of this conference and i think it's important that for sri lanka now with the use of this hand society in Singapore, we call ourselves hand and reconstructive microsurgeons. So, um, hand surgeons operate anything they can get their hands on. So, we, we because the reconstructive microsurgery, so we also involve in the lower limb reconstruction. So, I think it's a great opportunity for the orthopedic surgeons and the plastic surgeons to get together. But I think it's very important to get an expert review panel to look at the problems in Sri Lanka pertaining to limb injuries, both upper limb and lower limb, through a multidisciplinary approach. So the multidisciplinary, and I would say even a transdisciplinary. So multidisciplinary means getting all the allied health professions, that means your authorities, your prosthetists, your OTs, your PTs, and your nursing professionals all coming together to understand the patient's problems, challenges, and expectations. But also involve the sociologists about employers, and so that we get a clear picture of what's happening with the patient with these types of injury. Once we identify and prioritize the problems and the issues faced by the individuals in Sri Lanka, then it is possible to come up with a national plan of what they need. Because sometimes what we think the patient needs may not be what the patient needs. So let us go back to understand them. And then to pilot that new uh, guidelines that you have developed for a small area to see whether it will work and then to evaluate the program i think this transdisciplinary approach is important and one other thing that i find that is lacking especially when we're trying to compare amputations with uh, reconstruction salvage is to understand the patient's lived experience so my colleague dr rex and myself are planning to do a phenomenological study which is a lived experience about patients who had limb salvage so we can say a lot of things about like i i always believe that if you do a rapid assessment of the patient by a multidisciplinary team on arrival with say a 3c fracture and decide early amputations then a lot of the so-called disadvantages we see in the literature mainly from observational studies and retrospective studies can be overcome. So within two to three weeks, the patient is fully uh, rehabilitated from the stump perspective and then can have early prosthetic management and should be able to return back to work faster. And the cost then can be seen. Now, just because people say that the patient prefers the salvage, but until they find out what impact the salvage as I showed in that case, that took a prolonged period of time prior to the patient achieving the final outcome. So it is important to understand our patients. So the patients in Sri Lanka may have a different experience from those in the West. So that's why the metal study as compared to the leap study is quite different. The metals were very highly motivated individuals, which were soldiers, and they preferred amputation as opposed to salvage. So but understanding we don't have that data yet about how our patients feel. So we need to do research in that. And I think when that happens, then we will then able to be a, gather the evidence from our community to see which is better, reconstruction or uh, amputation. With that, I once again would like to thank the organizers for this opportunity to present this and I'm happy to take uh, any questions and I am available by email for contact, for collaboration and working together. Thank you and have a great conference. Goodbye.